five hours and, uh, you know, and we get them where we want them to be, tenderness. I'm Doug with America's Best Restaurants, and we're traveling the country coast to coast to find restaurants that you should dine at on a frequent basis, like JR's Hometown Grill and Pub right here in Milan, Michigan. We're gonna go inside and talk to Robert, the owner and operator. They've got four locations around the area, and what makes them so unique? It's a diverse menu that's pretty much anything for anyone in the family. You're gonna find something that you're going to enjoy, and they're a staple in every community that they're in. So why don't you come with me? Let's go inside, talk to Robert, and check out JR's. Inside. By the way, this is Robert. I mentioned him outside. He's the owner, operator, creator of JR's. So I'm gonna get into the backstory and everything that's gone into building up JR's. But first off, let's start right here with this masterpiece of ribs sitting in front of you. Please explain, what are we looking at? <laughs> so we have a uh, two and a half pound rack of uh, St. Louis style cut ribs. Uh, we've seasoned them, obviously. Uh, smoke them in-house. Uh, I'm gonna bust you off a little piece here. Oh, please. Uh, and then, I like uh, him. Yeah, you know, get the service end of it here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we it comes out once it's cooked and smoked, usually about almost about two pounds, pound and a half to two pounds. Ooh. So get two sides and toast with it. It's a good little meal. That is a full rack. Oh no, that's a full rack. Yeah, we don't mm -hmm. mess around. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You yeah. don't skimp. Yeah, you're not getting. Uh, you're not getting uh, five, six bones and calling it a full rack. You get the whole rack. Oh man. Would you, would you learn how to do ribs like this? So we, uh, we experiment with quite a few different ways, uh, different seasonings, different rubs, different blends of rubs, and just found an avenue that worked really well for us in our facility. So uh, with the different smokes and the different types of liquid smokes and the, and the different concepts in the back, uh, it came up with a, a way that works. So, I mean, everybody has their own special thing. If it's a trigger, yeah. if it's a, yeah. you know, a smoker out back, uh, you know, we have our own system in the back and it takes about five, four or five hours and, mm. uh, you know, and we get them where we want them to be, tenderness and everything else, so. That's amazing. Yep, so mm. the mesquite flavors that we use in there are rubs and stuff like that, give it a nice little smoke and then we obviously add the smoke to it as well. And you've been in the restaurant business a long time. 35 years. 35 years. Yep. You started back a house and worked your way up. Was it family? Started busting tables when I was a kid. Yep. And then did dishes and worked in the kitchen and then worked in the front and then uh, progressed on to do some fine dining stuff for many years and went on to work for some casual dining chains. Kind of got some you know background history on you know how to do things and then decided I want to go out on my own eventually. One of the biggest things too, you have multiple locations. You have four locations up around this area mm -hmm. in, in Michigan, but you're local. Yep. Absolutely, 100%. Live 35, 40 minutes from here, and then uh, I have three other locations in Tecumseh and Milan and Brooklyn, uh, which obviously they've you know all been around 10, 12 years. Uh, but there, we're like I said, we live right in the middle of all of them. So we live right in Adrian, and uh, we own all four restaurants. There's no, there's no national portion to it or anything else. Uh, we support locally. We buy locally. We do everything as much locally as we can. So love that. I tell you what, that 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 deserves a cheers. Oh, absolutely. Let me. Uh, let me take this Obviously off. Obviously you have your Long Island you chose this time. I'm, I'm doing going. the Long Island, yeah, this right. time. See see yeah. how I said that? This time, right. I right. have multiple. He's I only going Southern one. Bell. I'm going so. three, so. Mm. Yep. So talk about the community stuff real quick. Yep. Because that's something that as we've traveled, it seems to be such a missing element. Not just restaurants, but businesses in general, but you really ingrain yourself into the local communities and help support and do everything you can. So from day one, from when we first built the first restaurant in Adrian, you know, we, we chose 
to make sure we use local contractors, local people, local designers. I mean, as locally as we could with our equipment purchases, everything is, and we, we try to do that in every community we've gone to at built in, from HVAC to electrical to who paints the place. Uh, I mean, everything we've tried to do as much locally as possible. We involve ourselves with our schools, uh, you know, with every you know aspect of what we're capable of when it comes to support, if it's donation, after proms, graduation stuff, uh, the discount cards for the schools to help support their athletics, if it's free kid meals for achieving high grades or reading excellence, yeah. whatever it is, we try to involve ourselves as well as the nonprofits in town. You know, when they call and they need a, a crock pot of soup for the day, you know, for their soup kitchen fundraiser or whatever it may be, or uh, sandwiches. And we try to do all that kind of stuff. We've always tried to ingrain ourselves, you know, dying to donate. We try to do at least one or two a year yeah. per location for some kind of of organization that we find is, is well represented for our community. If it's a youth organization, if it's a maybe something happened to a family, whatever it may be, we've always tried to be the ones that step to the front and try to help out with those things. That's awesome. Love that. Love that. Let's go in salad time. Hey, summer's coming, even though we're in Michigan. And yep. I don't know when summer actually hits in Michigan, but yeah. hey, it's usually by now, but it hasn't quite <laughs> got there yet. So. Uh, we have a uh, chicken pecan salad. So you got uh, our fresh iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, uh, a fresh blend that we make in-house. We cut everything by hand. Uh, they got uh, dried cherries, candied pecans, and fresh cut apples with a raspberry vinaigrette. And then we charbroil a chicken breast that we hand butcher in-house as well. Yep. Uh, season, brine, the whole number, and then it comes out with feta and tomatoes on it. So, Pretty tasty little salad. Very refreshing for the summertime. So we're talking about hand cut. I mean, we're going to get to the steak a little bit. You talk about the chicken, even down to the tenders that mm -hmm. that we're going to cover. Yep. A lot of the magic just happens right back here, man. Absolutely. Everything everything we do uh, is pretty much made, every, well, everything's made to order. But prepping for it and in, in, in the butchering and all that kind of stuff, like we butcher our own ribeyes, like we said, we're going to get to. We hand make hand patty our own burgers. Uh, you know, we hand. Our, Brian, we brine all of our chicken tenders, we hand butcher all of our chicken breasts, so we trim them down. We cut our own boneless wings, we obviously smoke our own ribs. I mean, it, you know, everything comes together on the line. That's the whole aspect. Is, you know, we, we can kind of prep a little bit for it, but 90% of the work comes on the line. Like, you know, when it comes time to execute the yeah. food. So, and that's why we've always been a huge advocate of dining in. We, we want people dining in, taking this food and having it at the table. And I mean, yes, we can sell it to you to go, but the quality of the to-go is not what this food was meant for. This food was meant to dine in the restaurant. And yes, some things travel and some things don't, but the experience is when it comes out of the kitchen. Like it comes out piping hot, fresh, and ready to go. Love it, that's another cheers. Oh. Intermission number two, okay. cheers, Very nice. drink. I like this, see? See how we flow here? Mm. I got it. Poor Austin has to sit over there, he gets nothing. That's all right. We'll take care of Austin a little later. We're, we're good. Uh, chicken dinners. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Chicken them. fingers, yep. yep. So we, we get fresh chicken tenders in. We brine them for 24 hours. Uh, we make our own batter mix, uh, our dry and our wet mix that we make. Uh, we season them a little bit differently, both both the dry and the wet, uh, and then uh, hand batter them to order. So they're anywhere between three and four ounces a piece. So there's not a, there's not a light chicken tender in there. So oh. it's, it's a load of chicken tenders. So you're getting about almost a three quarters of a pound of chicken tenders. So for a basket. Isn't we go through this? Again, the overriding theme is. Right, pound and you, a half. You get a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. You your get a value lot. will never be deteriorated in our, in our facilities. We want to make sure when you get your plate that you're satisfied with the price and the quantity that you got. As well as the quality, yeah. obviously. Absolutely, where you're nailing yep. that. And then pickles. Fried pickles. Yep. Pickles. Hand cut pickles. We hand cut every pickle in there. So they're all cut. Uh, they come in whole, we cut them down, <clears throat> batter them and fry them for you. Hand cut again. Yeah, hand cut again. Even down to the pickles. And down to the pickles. So sliced tomatoes, pickles, onions, everything's hand cut. So You're old school, I like that, old man. Old school, yep, yep. We don't buy anything, pretty much, we don't buy We don't buy a lot of processed stuff. We do have some appetizers that are pre-breaded or whatever else it may be, but all your center of the plate stuff is made in house. Wow, that, that's awesome. Yep. Love it. What's the soup? Chicken Baja soup. So this is a uh, like a chicken enchilada uh, with some black beans, some corn, uh, chicken obviously, and then some enchilada. We use an enchilada sauce that we make, we blend in there. Uh, gives a little bit of zip, a little bit of spice. It's got a little heat to it, so just FYI. So good in the wintertime. We sell a chili. Those two things we sell all day, every day. Oh, wow. So we always have a super day. 
And then we have that every day as long as our, as well as our chili. Mm. You're worried about me needing a drink. Right. Robert, I have three drinks in front of me. Right. right? I'm you. good. Right. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't want you to, to overdo it, you know. No, I'm good. Austin can drive. <laughs> We're good. All right. Let's talk about this. Okay, so burger-wise, wow. this has always been like our signature burger. So we've always had uh, our belly buster, and then we have a half belly buster. This yeah. is obviously a whole belly buster. This is two eight-ounce fresh-made patties, uh, charbroiled, seasoned with our in-house seasoning that we make. Same with almost everything on here. Uh, bacon, ham, mushrooms, barbecue sauce, pretty much the whole kitchen sink on it. So lettuce, tomato, onion, and again, you're well over a pound and a half. So how do you come up with this? Do you like open the fridge and go, well, I've got this, 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 let's slap it on there. What's the creative yeah, part? A lot of stuff, you, you know, as I'm traveling, I've seen things, you know, like when we go places, I see things I like and I try to put our own spin on. So if I, I see somebody, you know, has a has a burger that, you know, maybe it's maybe it's two four ounce patties and they, and they did it and I was like, I can do that with two eight ounce patties and I can make it really big, you know? And so well, what would you call something like that? Well, you call it a belly buster, right? We, we walk out, you feel like you're gonna bust. So, and we get, we sell a ton of them. So and I watch people eat those whole things and it just blows my mind. It's making me eat that whole thing. I was going to ask you, does it does it come out automatically with the to-go box so people can take it half should, of it? you'd think. But I've got some guys that come in and order that religiously that eat that for lunch. So yeah. How do they function no, after that's that? That's what I'm saying. I need a nap. Yeah, no kidding. Right. They go back out and work for four that's hours? That's what I'm saying, right. I'm getting uh, sleepy looking at it. I know. Me too. Holy cow. <laughs> Dang. Oh. All right. We're going to save those for last. Okay the steak. So ribeye, yep. So we have our uh, 12 ounce plus, we always call it 12 plus because we don't cut anything <laughs> short. Uh, we do that with our New York strip and our ribeye, we hand cut them. Uh, they're a choice to uh, go whole loin, hand cut them, come in uh, probably every other day. We are slicing up a dozen to two dozen. Oh, uh, no. You got fresh vegetables in there that we've obviously sauteed uh, with a bell pepper medley and your broccoli. And then we again, once again, everything on there is using our house seasoning. So mm. we get our salts, our peppers, and our garlics in there. And then uh, baked potato, which we always have fresh baked potatoes. So how many iterations did it take to get that seasoning just right? Uh, it took a few, you know, just to kind of get the right balance. So we oh, have wow. a pretty good blend for it now. Everybody's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing. You know, I mean, when it comes to, we have recipes for it, obviously, but you know, it took a while. But once we got it, you know, it's been that way for 10 years now. So. I was gonna wonder if it was it was all up here where no, only you know no, it, it's no, all written down. No, I, we, we do it just like everybody else. I make recipes, I have them in the stores. They have recipes for dressings, for drinks, for flour blends that, you know, to make sure it's consistent from store to store. Yeah. My biggest thing is I always wanna make sure if you come here, Adrian or Mylan, to come see Brooklyn, any one of the four, you get the same quality product that's made the same way. I don't want you going in and getting a rack of ribs in one place and they taste overly mosquito or you go in and get a ribeye and it's overly salty or, you know, or it's not cut right and it's too thin or the salad's not dressed the same way. You know, it's always about consistency. So we want to make sure we consistently do it across the board the same way. And you spend a lot of time in all the stores. I managing. try to, yep, I try to, depending on where, what my need is. You know, if I'm needed in Adrian to cook a couple nights a week, then I cook there. If I'm needed to cover a manager's vacation in Brooklyn, I'll be in Brooklyn. If I'm over here for a day, you know, shooting a TV show yeah. or an internet show, you know, I'm over here all day today, you know, so I bounce around quite a bit. So, but okay. I, I have really good staff. The thing is, is my general managers have worked hard for me through this whole time. Uh, they do, they do great work. My key hourly staff members have really developed really well and done really well. So I have a good, a great staff. That's the thing is my staff builds the restaurant. I just help reiterate and back them up, right? Support structure. So I'm a support structure. If I can do anything in here, I just do it when I need to. Love it. So. One more cheers. Oh. I'm gonna change up. Oh, going to the you're, chocolate martini. You're staying with the same. I'm staying with same the Southern Belle. Ah, come on, man. Ooh. That's yeah, a nice afternoon. Ooh, that, that's good. That's so good. every night of the week, we have a different drink special. So for example, martinis on Thursday night are your drink special. We have about 25 different martinis that we make. On Friday nights, we do our Long Island iced teas for $5. We make about 10 to 15 different kinds of Long Island iced tea. There's not just one Long Island iced tea. You can make Long Island iced tea out of whatever you want. Okay. You can do it from cranberry to fruits to Caribbeans, all the way to anything, whatever you want to do. We have, like I said, we've got 20 different ones. And then Mondays and Tuesdays with our draft beers, our bottle beers. We have 12 different draft beers, a lot of local breweries. Uh, those are on Mondays. And then Tuesdays, we do bottle beers with some of the local breweries that we don't put on tap. And some of our other stuff and then Wednesdays is bourbon and that's kind of my night so 
Nothing wrong I, with that. I, I'm a bourbon man, so we have all kinds of flavored bourbons. We've got the vanillas and the peaches and the apples, as long as you're traditional. I mean, yeah. everything else, your Jack, your Jim, your Johnny Walkers, and all the, all the different kinds of stuff. We've got all kinds of stuff, so full service gamut of bar. So but every night, like I said, and Saturdays is margaritas. Yeah. Sundays is Bloody Marys. So I, we have a drink got every the whole day. week covered, man. Every day, and then they're all $5 or less. So those are all $5 days, only on those days. So, but you can pick a day, you can come every day and have an inexpensive drink. I recommend coming every day. <laughs> come there every you go. Day. There you go, you just yep. have it covered. Yep. Uh, one last, the cronut. The Please cronut. explain that delicacy. So the cronut is a, a pastry that we basically make out of croissant dough. Uh, we form it the shape of a donut where the nut comes from, the donut, the cronut, croissant. Uh, it's made from croissant dough. Uh, we take them, we proof them, they take about three days to make. So we proof them, we rise them, we cut them, we rise them again, fry them, do the whole aspect, and then we sugar them. And then uh, we bring them to the stores, and the stores are gonna start selling those probably in about two or three weeks as a dessert option on our LTO. You can nice. get them covered in whatever you want, chocolate, caramel, raspberry, or you can do all three. Do all three. Yeah, do all three. That's kind of <laughs> what I said. But it's an outstanding version of a donut. It gives you a different flavor than a yeast donut and a different flavor than a cake donut. It just doesn't have the, it's, it's a different consistency and a different flavor profile. And like I said, I think it's, I think it's great. My staff loves them, my kids love them. So that was my test, my first guinea pigs were my kids and my wife. So they enjoyed it very thoroughly. This is the second plate to come out, by the way. Austin <laughs> and I already killed one, so we had to get extras. So if that tells you anything, make sure that you get the chrome. Right. So we've covered all the food, we've covered yep. the drinks. Any other aspect? This is chance to give one last plug, anything that we didn't cover? No, it's just, uh, we really, like I said, our biggest thing is we want people to come back out and dine out and dine in. You know, come out and sit with your family, put your phones down, enjoy your company with each other, communicate and, uh, and enjoy a great meal and, and dine in and get to know our staff and our communities and, and uh, support the locally owned restaurants. That's all I got to say. I mean, it's not just me, but any locally owned restaurant. I, you know, every restaurant tour is out there working their tail off. Yep. Just want to see everybody get out and support them. And the biggest thing about your menu, once again, family-wise, you truly have something for everybody. We can cover. We can cover you from seafood to to pork to ribs to steaks to burgers to chicken fingers to chicken bisque. We have a smothered chicken. We've got salmon. We've got shrimp. Uh, tilapia. Obviously, all the restaurants, you know, support your local restaurants and then, uh, you know, just make sure they go out and take care of them because they've been working their, their behinds up, like I said. Sounds good. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you want more information, click the subscribe button below, hit the bell notification when we drop more episodes. You're going to be notified. Also, you can find JR's online website, social media, and they have a full listing right here on AmericasBestRestaurants.com as well. So I'm going to go ahead. One last toast. Robert, thank you so much. Tell you what, if you live in this area, you've got four locations, you are doing yourself a disservice if you are not at this restaurant, one of the four locations on a weekly basis. The place is great. You've got a community supporter. I encourage you to come out and support them. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. I'm out. <laughs>